thank you very much, Ottoline, to give the perfect introduction. So uh, we have not to talk on these aspects of science and also thank the organizers that th my original title that I gave was science ideologies and daily life and they thought it was better to use agrobacterium biotechnology and uh, I fully agree and uh, we'll, I will try to explain why. So, uh, today if you ask people in the street what is their concern, it is the environment. It's not what Maltus was saying, food. Uh, it's the environment and especially what goes on in Brazil at the moment with the burning of the forest. It's just enhanced. So, uh, what is the science of ecology? Suddenly, we realize it's, we know, not very much. It's all very recent. And that's what I will try to stress, that it's extremely crucial, but it's a knowledge that is extremely recent and that we have to learn to handle. Um, as scientists, with what we heard, it's clear if we want to do uh, progress in environment, uh, we will have to do it by science, uh, use science-based evidence and uh, have the right knowledge and do the really condition the individual researchers that they go to the facts and that they pay attention and that they are careful on their statements. Uh, and that this whole scientific community helps each other because there's so much data you cannot handle yourself. You have to rely on your colleagues. We have to have new ways of working together in our society. And then we have to make the good decision balance. And the picture that is there, that's the fall army worm. Uh, that can be, uh, we could save the plants with the BT system, but we didn't do it and the fall, because we didn't take the right decisions and the fall army worm is now all over. Uh, it's in Asia attacking China, it's in South Africa. It's, it brings the drama, enormous dramas in the developing world. Um, so that's uh, how I think uh, science will be uh, contributing, that's to really use the scientific methods. And why do we uh, have to do these new techniques? Well, there is one major thing that we cannot wait any longer with the world population. Uh, when I grew up and just uh, after the war, it, it was, we were over 2 billion people. Now it will not take uh, 100 years, so be between 44 and, uh, and now, uh, it will not take th that time that we will be with 11 billion. And all the dramas that it will take, it's not, not only all the diseases that also we will not have more difficulty to contain because we have so many hosts for, the, for these diseases. But, and it's also not the amount of food because human ingenuity can't answer to Malthus and the economists of the 18th century. Yes, we can enhance the production, but the, then we create an enormous pollution. And we see that also we don't have the quality of the food. We, we can have an amount of food, but the quality is not there. And uh, when we talk about the development goals from the United Nations, there is very clearly a need to food that has the, the right nutritious value because there is a starvation. It's not the amount of food for, for many. There is for many, it's the, what we call the stunted children that become stunted adults that have not normal nervous development and intelligent development. And that's what we find in all our big cities the, uh, among the poor population and all over Africa. Uh, we, people survive, the ones we see, we, they survive, but they don't survive with the normal possible evolu evolution that neurobiologists see that we would need. And that's an enormous responsibility. We talked already ab about the environmental damage, but most of all, what people also uh, ignore, that all the society and economical problems, when we are few, well, there are wars, there are clashes, but 
that doesn't disturb our planet. But when you are with 10 billion, 11 billion, and there are problems and people become angry, it's much, much more dangerous. And that's all the reason why urgently we have to apply this type of science. Once more, for those who would forget, the rich world population is rather stable, but Africa is coming up dramatically. And that are the figures uh, of FAO. And uh, Asia is already going down, but Africa not. And that's uh, one of the major uh, dramas that are waiting for us. And here in Sweden, of course, you had uh, Hans Rosling uh, who explained, yes, there is progress. And even if you don't see it, if you, all these figures, you have to read the book, it's worthwhile. Uh, it's, you, you see that uh, uh, it's only, only one billion people who really have no bed, have to walk to have water, and so on. But uh, the, there is uh, others who at least they have a bed, they don't have to sleep on the floor, and at least they can heat something. Uh, oh, but that's already four billion people. Uh, and, but if you take the curves, there is progress, there are slight shifts, but it's a shame that, uh, that, that it takes so long and uh, that our society is not better organized, uh, the, the wealth that we have been creating to have the shift further. And that's an enormous responsibility. And we don't talk about the ones who are even not mentioned here, the very few ones who are enormously rich. So we know it's the problem. What can science do? Well, I will maybe make an odd uh, remark, but I think we have to take together all what is life science. Because at the moment, uh, well, maybe I should stand here to, to use the pointer. We, uh, when we talk about science, we think the enormous progress that we have made in the science of the non-living world. Chemistry, physics, fantastic. Uh, I symbolize it here with the Feynman lectures. Uh, somebody who, uh, at Caltech, a fantastic man, Nobel Prize winner in physics, who explained the forces in the nucleus. And when the students asked him, but all these equations, what does it mean? He said, I also don't know what it means, but see what we can do with it. It's fantastic, and it is it's fantastic. And I was also struck, uh, you, you, people have followed uh, the, the Hawkins, Stephen Hawkins, uh, all what he did on black holes and on the, in, this, uh, in astronomy. It's fantastic uh, what he did, especially under the physical constances that he had to live most of his life. Uh, but his book that just came out, the, uh, that his family and his co-workers made, uh, the, the brief answers to the big questions, it's all on the non-physical world. And when he touches on the living world, he says, well, yes, uh, there GMOs, we don't know why, why, what position we have to take. And it's, uh, it's the right way as a scientist, if you don't know, to say that. But for our society, we know, and, and that's why everybody who is in life science uh, should really focus on that. And if you don't believe in evolution, of you, th you still have a, uh, a weakness for intelligent design, well, uh, read Nick Lane. He really gives the figures what we are sure, uh, what the scientists of, from the non-living world are sure when that we 4.6 billion years ago, uh, when uh, uh, this uh, planet started, that already 3.9 billion years, there were cells. And, uh, and then it took many billion years till uh, uh, really the cells with the nucleus came there, because the first was uh, the, all the bacterial evolution, and then everything went very rapidly. And, uh, other people, those of you who are mostly interested in art and, uh, and the way we are living and interacting as a society, it's extremely important because it's the, that's the way we live and that's the way we will always take decisions. But there, we should remember that already 300,000 years we were doing trading. 
uh, that the uh, anthropologists get, uh, have shown that. And so we see there is an, an enormous uh, link on all these living organisms and science started so recently. Uh, uh, th so that all the signs that uh, uh, Feynman, Hawkins are, are talking about, well, th that's the, just the 20th century. Uh, and th then, well, Enlightenment period was there, and then we started talking about science. But we were living, and all the societies, and even our law goes back to the law of the, that, that all was there for 5,000 years ago. So we have learned to live and to interact with each other, to build our society, to build our economy without knowing the signs. So log logically, uh, what Darwin says in the, in the evolution, well, we, we were very well prepared at least to live, otherwise we would not have lived and, and arrived to this type of society. So the all the emotional reasoning that we have done, all this is encoded in our neurons, and that we, we still have to learn that. But we have to go on living and not killing each other, so there is an, an enormous urgency to already understand genetics, but also understand that we have to live with the science that will explain us what it is, that it can be explained. And it's not because t today we cannot explain it that we should not do it. So the major uh, responsibility for scientists is using the scientist method to do life science. And sorry, I was a bit long here, but uh, you uh, here I remember that how the science was going and immediately already in the uh, 17th century in, in Sweden, Descartes was act also active here to explain his methods of reasoning and society thought, yes, the enlightenment will solve our problems. But life science is different. Enlightenment could not solve these problems be because we don't know what living was. We didn't know any anything of, of, of the details on life science. We could do, yes, the physical and the, and the chemical science. So. There we have, today, at the, we still talk in the natural science about the laws of nature. But laws of nature, yes, that's good for the non-living world, but we don't know anything on the laws of nature of, uh, of our living world and our ecology. And that's what we have to work out. And there we have to say, well, humbly, we do not know. And social science that we use and that we analyze, that's the beginning of the observation. All what we do and bring joy in arts uh, and what we call the humanities uh, and that makes that we tell to our politicians, we want that. Yeah, but what is the, 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 the scientific basis of it? That we have to find out. And that's why urgently life sciences should unite and talk to each other and see what can we bring forward. Where can we go? Uh, the scientific method is simple. You observe, you ask questions, and you do a hypothesis. But no, it's a hypothesis. And then you do experiments to see if, it, if, if you can do testing and prove it, uh, that it is correct. And if, it's, uh, if you prove it's not correct, you, you do other hypotheses. That's good, and that's what the, the progress did. But in life science, it's complicated. And very often, for our de life decisions, if you start analyzing, we will not talk about it. Uh, we are here till tomorrow morning. Uh, <laughs> but uh, in life science, it, it always went with dogmas. There were always people who say, we know, and we say, and you have to do that. And that's what we have to change. Uh, in science, there is no dogma, and we have now seen the part of the, uh, of the evolution. And, uh, when I started uh, biochemistry, that was in 1951, uh, at that moment in our university, in the textbooks, there was still written DNAs for animals and RNAs for plants and microorganisms. Uh, well, so in, suddenly in ten, uh, 10 years, we had 
first dogma, DNA makes RNA makes proteins. No, since 10 years we know it's very, very much uh, more complex. Uh, how the, the RNA controls itself, gives instructions back to the DNA, can be a, a, a scaffold for proteins, for uh, how all the even the small molecules and, and the peptides and the small RNAs we have, all, all this makes the whole, what we call now, for better or not, uh, of the black box, that's an ugly word, so we just say the region of homostasis, uh, the dynamic equilibrium between all the biochemical reactions that goes on. But that is what we are solving now and that we can solve. But yeah, the systems biology, we can find these pathways, and somewhere there is the gene that, that keeps it and, and then makes it working. But how it is going and how we come to the phenotypes, and it's the phenotype society is interested in, there is a long way to go. Uh, and plant breeding is extremely important. And uh, people were taken away sometimes by the genes, but if you see in medicine, where we can not et ethically touch the genes uh, at the moment, we have discussions on that. Then with chemicals, we, uh, we, we do what we call uh, clinical trials. But we have to realize that plant breeding is also adapting the plant to the uh, weather circumstances, the way the crop is done, adapting it to agriculture. So at the moment, really what we need to do is uh, progress in agriculture to, for solving the problems that our society has. And we have the molecular tools for that, but really using them is extremely complex. Um, to start telling it, uh, just an example that we did 20 years ago with some colleagues in, in Brazil, uh, it's the Bay of Rio, there is a, a pitanga, a Brazilian cherry, and if it grows close to the sea, where there is a lot of stress for growth, then it's, it's really a, a very small uh, shrub. Uh, and if you go a bit more uphill, the, the soil is better, then you have bushes, uh, and then it goes through to well, a small tree, you know, eight, eight meters. And if you then compare the, the DNA, in those days we couldn't do, had no money for doing sequencing, that was not possible. It was the AFLP technique, the, uh, technique that was worked out by Mark Sabot when he was in, uh, close to Wageningen and in Kijin. Um, he sees that where there is a maximum stress, there's a maximum of varieties. And there is much less difference in the genome between the, uh, this uh, shrub, uh, uh, this bush, and the tree. Uh, then there is among the, the shrubs that you see there, because the genome, under the stress circumstances, always uh, tries to to Vera, and that's the basis of what I want to say. That's uh, that uh, I try it here. Th that there is this uh, ecological uh, evolution uh, and the development phase that each influence each other. Uh, a plant doesn't grow uh, and takes the, the shapes on that uh, the other environment puts on it, and then uh, either it's encoded at a certain moment in the DNA, of sometimes epigenetically, not expressed only in a certain developmental phase, uh, expressed, and then uh, otherwise it's just developmentally different. And that is the whole science that we have to develop. And at the moment, uh, we are in a beginning phase. Just like in, in, in our medicine, uh, we are in the beginning phase. Veterinary medicine is there, and agriculture absolutely is there in the beginning phase. So uh, we have the permanent reaction between organism and environment, and th that all the steps th there and the signals that going on uh, that we have to... Uh, 
So we cannot go into details, but you have to keep it in mind if you want to judge uh, what is science. Um, and we have seen when uh, genetic modification was starting, traditional agriculture was not very keen on it and was not interested. And people said, and I symbolize it by a tree, uh, we know what the plants are. We are growing the plants. These molecular biologists, uh, what can they do? And it's a fact. What, what can they do? It's, it's extremely limited what they can do. So you can hear the symbol of systems biology. You could really hope that you know uh, all the pathways that give you the phenotypes that you have here based from the, uh, the number of genes that are there and the ways they are regulated. But we are not there yet. And at the moment, society asks, we badly need the optimum situation. And that's what we have to do. So as molecular biologists, uh, we have to learn to talk to agriculture and not make decisions. And all the transgenic plants that are made were nowhere because we, we were not allowed to do field trials. So the, most of the, of the plants that you make in the laboratory, you cannot do. At the moment, it's only China and some places in the States uh, uh, that you can uh, really uh, go and there is an interest in doing the field trials. And it's the same if, if we do it by gene transfer or, or by genetic modification with the new techniques that we uh, call CRISPR-Cas and, and so on that you have seen described. So at the moment we are in uh, this situation that uh, more uh, discussion should be to the uh, those who can do to the contribution of knowledge, but we should still remember that society, if they look to the tree, that's the, well, how they look to the tree, like the painter looks to the tree. That's a painting for the Belgian surrealist Magritte from 1933. Terrible year, 1933. Uh, but um, the, this way of enjoying nature, it's normal. That's the way, as I said from the beginning, that we all developed without the science. And that's what you have to see as if you are a scientist, uh, that you don't forget who is the rest of the world, who is not a scientist. And there I want to stress a bit more, because uh, before I come to the agrobacterium, we, it's, the crown gall is, is symbolized there, we found. Uh, it was known, and I will tell the history uh, about how agrobacterium, uh, we knew what the molecular base was of the inducing of this crown gall. And once it was there, that's the scientific discovery. And that will go, always go on, but there is still a long way if we can, can use this innovation to an economy. We were lucky because it was, everybody was surprised. So we did a startup and we made in Ghent plant genetic systems and there were, we did tree constructions and the old, that are still the tree that all used all over the world. That was the, B, the BT for uh, giving insect resistance. Um, there was a herbicide resistance for Basta. And this one that's symbolized there with canola is used all over in Canada, but the major companies have decided not to use it elsewhere at the moment. Uh, that's hybrid vigor. That's male sterility and it gives 20% more yields and under stress consent, uh, circumstances, sometimes 60% more yields. But that are the facts for the economy of the system. But explain to society these stories, that's a very long way to go. Well, the agrobacterium story. For those who are interested, uh, I've seen, I mean, Brown was the real, for me, the nestor of agrobacterium. Because uh, it was found, this crown gold tumor uh, that uh, uh, I showed in the, in the other slide, uh, that was found around 1900 and described at Smith Dawson, 1904. Uh, but nobody knew what was going on. Uh, Armin Brown was the first one to analyze it systematically and start the principle uh, that there was a bacterium, this agrobacterium, uh, later on called Tumefaciens, uh, 
that was responsible and there was an active principle that a tumor inducing principle he called it that was in the plant and that was transferred uh, to the plant tissue and he saw there was secondary tumors that could come up where there was no bacteria and he also could show with temperature shifts that there were uh, the bacteria uh, were no longer uh, needed and all uh, for, make, for the further tumor development. So he said there must be this tumor inducing principle. And even in uh, 47, uh, when at Rockefeller University, where he, where he was, uh, every showed that there was DNA responsible for genetic information and that it was not a structure molecule, he was the first one to say there must be a transfer of DNA. Yeah, okay, but it, it was not shown, but that was happened. And uh, that's his work on apple trees and studying how, how these tumors developed. And that was an enormous progress. Uh, at, at today, uh, we know now that in the the, the, the symbol of the TI plasmid is because in, in Ghent we did the hypothesis uh, it, it might be either a plasmid because uh, with the antibiotic resistance people knew already about plasmids. Uh, so it's either a plasmid or it, ca it can be a virus. So we analyzed and we found the TI plasmids and now we know it's serendipity that we know it because agrobacterium has an enormous circular genome, has a linear genome, has two types of plasmids. We thought in those days it was the biggest type of plasmid that we that could that we could isolate uh, was this one, but actually it's a smaller. The other one is much bigger. So now we know all the sequences of, of this DNA. There is an enormous progress, and we are, will try rapidly to say how important agrobacterium still is uh, in the because in those days, oh, what we drive us. Uh, was the fact that in this goal you see a compound that the bacteria can use and can catabolize. So we said that the bacteria changes the plant and forces the plant tissue to make a product that's good for the bacteria. So that's a mating an ecolo ecological needs because we, we could prove that the TI plasmid uh, from one strain make the one compound and uh, from another strain make another compound and we did and was convinced. But we didn't prove directly the, the, the good DNA transfer and Kang Wang uh, make it this joke that the bacteria are uh, living in the soil, signals from the plant wake it up and does the transformation and change it in a factory for compounds that are good for the and that of course symbolized Jeff Shell and myself uh, <laughs> We were there. But uh, if you want to learn this story, what go on in Ghent, by uh, Wageningen in University Press, there is just a, a book that, uh, booklet that came out on using the nature's shuttle for doing the first transgenic DNA. And that's the, the, the three of us, so, uh, Jeff Shell, myself, and Walter Fierce, we unfortunately just died last month. Uh, and Jeff died already. 15 years ago, but the three of us did it. Well, it's, I think it's May 74. We, we, uh, we did the first meeting on gene engineering in Ghent. It was the first European meeting on sequencing and DNA. And uh, Walter Fears was the one who did started sequencing of RNA and DNA in the 60s, all the manual sequencing. He did it for RNA phages. He did it for SV40 all manually. And that was really pioneering the molecular biology in Ghent and could make that we uh, could progress with this type of work. Since then, it's seen that in nature, uh, this agrobacterium was there since, of course, eternity. And that this transfer goes on like in sweet potato, all the sweet potatoes all over the world, if you analyze them, they have the whole tDNA. Uh, so uh, that's 
now we realize, just like Ottolin said, that all these changes that are on genomes uh, all the time, that also this, this transfer has occurred. And if we analyze at the moment agrobacterium, it's still such a model system uh, for seeing what do soil bacteria do. And now we re realize with rhizobium uh, what, uh, what all is going on. Agrobacterium has 600 small RNAs uh, that is encoded by agrobacterium and that influence uh, the bacteria's uh, response to environmental conditions and signals coming from the plants. Uh, we, see, we see all the enormous amount of peptides that Eva Condorosa already described that the rhizobia say were who are very close to uh, agrobacterium, and well, we will not talk nomenclature for microbiology, because, uh, but all these techniques of gene engineering that goes on, uh, it's fascinating, uh, and also the whole molecular biology that we are detecting from it, because the challenging that goes on, uh, uh, gives us uh, so much cues on uh, what is going on in, in the plant and what's going on with uh, changing phenotypes. Uh, and uh, there are still so many questions that with uh, agrobacterium we, we can ask. Uh, at the moment, uh, well, it surely it's not the, the only bacteria that will do horizontal transfer because we know we see other examples of uh, that are can say documented for horizontal transfer but we have not identified the, the dna and the trans and what is going on but well, we don't talk about rhodococcus or other bacteria that make nodules there are uh, other uh, activities that we see that, uh, that uh, it would be interesting to analyze further. But uh, we, we have also to realize that agrobacterium, it can transform. Now we know mostly every uh, angiosperm, but if you take food crops that we have been breeding for high yield then, and for good survival, then we see that the best varieties are still recalcitrant to infection with agrobacterium. So there are there special immune systems that we still have to analyze. So agrobacterium is a, will be a very good tool to better understand how do bacteria, uh, how do plants resist against in infectious diseases. It, it's, uh, agrobacterium, uh, how can he survive and compete with the other rhizobacterium? How can we work out the, the soil? All this is the type of science uh, that uh, uh, we will go on and, and is the work that goes on daily. Uh, one example uh, of the uh, work were, uh, th that is, uh, I found fascinating, we said agrobacterium forces a plant to make compounds that then give signals to other agrobacterium that, that, that they can develop there. But we never proved that. But now, thanks to the gene engineering, uh, this group uh, just came out last July in, in Nature Communications, uh, has shown uh, that uh, you can now in the laboratory engineer uh, a tissue to make uh, some compounds that attract rhizobacteria. So that will uh, bring a new, future, uh, uh, a new future for the people who take uh, soils new and will want to adapt the soils for the, the growing better the plant. There are other examples, a disease called crazy root disease. At the moment, everybody wants bioproducts. So the, a lot of uh, vegetables are now grown in hydroponic cultures. All over Europe, industries come up to make hydroponic cultures, so to make uh, what people call uh, more biological accepted. But that's a, a point we will not discuss here, what, uh, what that really means. But the result is that there are uh, 
agrobacterium strains that have developed and grow in, in this uh, hydroponic culture and give crazy root disease. And uh, it's a, ma a major problem. And if you start analyzing, uh, it's a b agrobacterium uh, for the genome, but has a, a plasmid com coming from a rhizogenous strain, uh, gives uh, other... Um, root development, it, it's a transfer of DNA. We, if you find the genes that, that are there, these genes uh, are interesting because they, they stimulate uh, uh, a lot of secondary metabolites in the plant. So they switch on pathways. So there is a, a whole new uh, way of studying secondary metabolites in plant by this uh, crazy root disease. So Actually, everywhere fundamental science goes on. And again, once more, uh, if we see uh, in, uh, in society uh, what is the major problem uh, for progress of a plant science, that this society doesn't accept it. And also in, in the economy, uh, the economy is established. That we have the big industry who is able to make all the food products that was there at the moment that, that the industry developed. But the world develops very much and now industry that who, who is on the spot tries to, to keep their, uh, wow, well, uh, the, the situation of, 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 of adventures and successful industry. So they decide what this is the science they will use and what they will do. And so the public sector should negotiate with the scientists uh, and what is reasonable when on the economy. I'm not an economist, I cannot say what, what is necessary, but we know, and that are the symbol of the development goals of the United Nations, that we have to cooperate and that in all the fields, Plants are important. Plants can contribute on all the problems of the development goals that the United Na uh, Nations has identified and say that we should do. So we have to work because in these 32 years that we can do gene engineering, what has been done? Well, it's very limited. Uh, you, you can start analyzing where plant biotechnology can help and what it brought in. It's it's okay, but uh, after all the meta-analyses that have been done, uh, we have to say it's too little. M much more could have been done. And that is the responsibility that the science should realize that they can do it and, and make that the society should accept that they do it. Because the amount of money that it costs for the moment for doing field trials, that's a report coming from industry, uh, well, no public sector can pay that. We can hope uh, that charities play the role of public sector in the developing countries, like Africa or, or people areas, but they also cannot, it's, we the rich countries at least have to organize our public sector uh, that together with these charities, we can help Africa. But uh, it's, uh, uh, if, if we are not able to do that, then nothing will happen and then we are really in a dangerous position. I will not go uh, too much on um, the economy of it, but it's worthwhile that people analyze what is this, uh, who creates value, who destroys value, what have we done in our society uh, with our economy. Uh, again, uh, I think scientists, a part of the science, should be involved with that and follow it. We have to learn how society judges science. And there, if we, if we work, that's something that we published uh, at least five years ago. Uh, if you talk, we see that there is so much thought about essentialism. People think, ah, oh, genes, that, is, that determines. And if you put a uh, fish gene in tomatoes, well, there will be a, a, a taste of fish there. And, uh, but it's, uh, Scientists laugh with it, but uh, 
that's the way society, the knowledge of science is not there. And you cannot ask them that, we, that they would know all the science. Uh, the, the simple laws of Mendel are already very complicated. We cannot ask. We have to see the, how society lives. Then uh, people, if you see how evolution works, uh, as Jacob said, it's an enormous mess of, of, t mess of tinkering and, and trying out and trying out for surviving and evolution. But people say, oh, it works. Look, fantastic how it works. So that must be intelligent design. It's the way we, 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 we reason in da daily life. Uh, uh, other people know uh, the essential feelings we have. So people have feelings of disgust. So... GMOs, I don't like them. I'm disgusted by, uh, by, yeah. Uh, so I'm mean, disgusted by it. I don't want it. So we have to see how you were reasoning. And uh, already thinking fast and slow by Daniel Kahneman and uh, Amos Tversky, who, uh, who unfortunately died already in the 90s. So he, he could not have the Nobel Prize. Uh, so uh, together they showed. How that we are like working with two systems for, for reasoning. Uh, so the, there is the rapid scanning that we do. Just uh, in a very short time, we take decisions. But often they are wrong. We don't have the information. But if you want to do it uh, really systematically thinking, it's too slow. So we have to, uh, to be guided to do that. And... Uh, Actually, we go back now uh, to Descartes and, uh, and Pascal's theories uh, wh when they judged uh, the beginning of enlightenment. Uh, people said immediately, if you use science, you do things that are dangerous. Well, uh, they already in those days, they gave answers to the precautionary principle. Uh, the good moral attitude is not to surrender uh, to fear of danger, but to master and calculating the probability that it will come. Instead of uh, really precautionary principle, we have, need to have good accountants, people who can calculate what is the danger. And we have to go, uh, society has to go progress. And uh, finally, what we call the good equation is we always have to see the risk of doing and the risk of not doing. And we have to, to have the good balance and we know very well how the situation is. And if we don't do that, well, uh, people will become angry. And we know uh, with the, uh, uh, what is going on if people got angry and, and cannot control uh, their emotions. And the uh, uh, European Union also knows it. For those who are interested, it just came out, uh, understanding our political nature. Uh, they, they really documenting very well. There was uh, 60 specialists in theology, human sciences, all kind of, of, of society uh, sciences who came together and analyzed what is scientific thinking, how can we promote it. But we are there with the fact that deeply in our neurobiology, we have this emotional uh, way of, of thinking. So how can we progress? Uh, Analyze it. It's only it's eighty. Play, uh, it's free, available on, on the internet. Um, so uh, we, only eighty pages. It's worthwhile to start thinking what this rational thinking that we use in the non-living world. And there I come back on the story. We have to unite for the living world to start thinking and progressing for all the living processes, uh, how they work and really uh, better analyze them. And the best thing you can do is really each time confess, I didn't think about that. And try to go together. Already uh, Leonardo da Vinci would did enormous uh, to the beginning of engineering the 16th century. I said, I offended God and mankind by doing so few with our life. So scientists who work extremely hard for solving one point, they should also think that that is, will not be able to communicate that well enough, that they also will have to talk to society. 
Yes, it's the last slide. <laughs> uh, so, yes, enjoy thinking, but see how is the society. And for those uh, who are bewildered by all the books that are coming out on people who tell the society, I ask you special attention for the book. It's in the Penguin series, Behave. It's a penguin of 800 pages, but uh, is a uh, Sapolsky, Robert Sapolsky, professor in Stanford. Uh, he's an anthropologist. Uh, sorry, well, no, sorry, he's a primatologist and, an, and a neurologist. So 30 years he studied the monkeys in Africa, uh, but he's, he's also, uh, as an MD and, and as a uh, neurologist, he studies all the signals that we make in our, in our neurobiology for making decisions and then how uh, we do all our awful behavior, if you see it in, at the level of, of racism, at the level of uh, genocides that have happened, and of the wars that have happened. Uh, and that's the emotional level. And bringing that together, I think at that moment, that's what the scientists have do, and once more with the title Agrobacterium. Agrobacterium was something that we stumbled on in, in the late 60s, early 70s, uh, starting working on. We found that we, it was the basis of gene engineering, but Agrobacterium is so much more. It, we learn now the enormous interaction in, in ecology between the microbiology. It is a revival of microbiology that we can do now uh, thanks to the first steps that were set by agrobacteria. Thank you.